I'm going to be doing a video about the repair of a small speedometer test device for Volkswagens. In actuality, it's also a video that I'm using to test the functionality of this gimbal. It's just started to appear in some of my videos for the uh, MT665 restoration that I've been using outside, but not really as an application for a, a stand-up uh, mount for the desk here at the bench. So this video is serving two purposes, obviously number one for the repair video, and number two for the for the implementation of this device at the uh, in the workbench area. So there's going to be some commentary here, some adjustments there. It's going to be kind of a, a strange video as I kind of try and find the best way to implement this. This here is an OTS-1. It is an artifact that I have brought back from the bug ranch. This device does not work. But if it did work, the theory of operation is uh, it produces a... What, what I'm told is a square wave, a square wave of increasing frequency uh, based on the turning of this potentiometer. And the other end of this device plugs into the standard fitting of a Volkswagen uh, tachometer or, or speedometer, I don't know which, and basically what that does is by turning this knob, essentially, it allows for the testing of these devices, speedometers or, te speedometers or tachometers, which, which use this type of signaling to make the needle move. So that's what this thing is, is supposed to do. It doesn't do it. So we're going to open this up. We're going to explore. I imagine it's not an extremely sophisticated unit. So we'll see what's wrong with it, see if we can get it working again. It has provision in the back for a 9-volt battery but also has the ability to hook up uh, 12 volts to it. I imagine 12 volts would be pretty handy if you know, you're hooking into a car battery since it's an automotive application and that's why they did that. I do not see uh, anywhere readily available on the box where 12 volts would go. I imagine it's possible that 12 volts connects through the harness. So I'll take a look at that as well. I do know for the, for the battery portion though, there's a, just a, a slot right here and we could probably hook up a power supply or a battery to this for the purpose of testing. And just four small Phillips screws opens up the device. It's all that's required, not very complex. Inside we could see that everything on this board is pretty much in support of this one 555 timer, which is generating the pulse for this. We have two capacitors, a resistor, and this one potentiometer. Uh, this is the power, and this is the uh, power selector switch and based on that power selector switch we can also see that the external 12 volts is coming from that line over here through this plug so that mystery is solved we're going to obviously go with the 9 volts here which i imagine is fed right into that switch first thing i'm going to do is make sure i'm getting proper voltage going to the 555 i've hooked it up to the ground on pin one and the dc voltage on pin eight and then I've deferred to the oscilloscope to see what I'm getting. And the oscilloscope is showing 9 volts going to the unit. So I'm going to say that things are looking pretty good. And it's time to move on to the signal outputs. When you look at the output signal, something interesting happens. The 555 is clearly functioning. And we see a square wave. And at first I, I looked at it and I said, okay, everything seems to be working fine. But watch what happens as I as I turn it up, right? We're at the lowest setting here with the knob all the way down. And as I bring it up, this is what I started to notice. There is something wrong here, right? I'm turning it and we're watching watching it, it collapse, a higher frequency. Frequency is increasing. But what's changing also is that the duty cycle is no longer even for the for the uh, uh, top of the wave it's a lot larger than the bottom of the wave right and this gets much worse I'll even go in and zoom in here a bit there, and there is some distortion at this point on the bottom of the of the wave you see that right there let's start to see some clipping over here right now I'll even make it larger roll it down a bit so Definitely things are, are, are going wrong here, and then eventually it, it completely cuts out and turns into garbage. Right? Now bring it back, just dial it back a little, and there it comes again. So right there is where it falls apart, 
And then as I dial it back, it turns back into normal. Something's going on here. Something's not right. This right here, this ramp, and the lower the frequency is, the better things are. So I'm thinking, let's look at some of the components, make sure the components are okay. There's a good chance it's probably the 555, but every time I say that, I've been wrong. We're going to look anyway. I've replicated the 555 circuit on this uh, Radio Shack test set right down to uh, the capacitor values to see how this circuit reacts using the same circuit with different components. Incidentally, the 555 chip that I'm using right over here is one that was pulled out of the MT665, so that's pretty cool. We're going to look at how that circuit operates uh, on the oscilloscope. I also have a 100K pot over here that I'm going to be using, which is the same value as the 100K pot on the test set that we're working on. The theory of operation remains the same, and the circuit looks good, but what we see is uh, the same characteristic. As I slowly turn this pot and bring it in, we see that the duty cycle is not the same. The top is definitely higher than the bottom, uh, by, um, we can see at this point here, two to one, right? I don't know exactly what that point is on the pot, but we do see it's two to one. And at this point already, it looks as, as though to me at this point, it's also consistently two to one, right? By graticule measurement anyway, not really a, a scientific measurement. If I open it up here, we can see that that's two to one. If I bring it all the way in on this one, it stays entirely stable. It doesn't self-destruct like the one on the test set. And we also don't see it start to arch inward. So there may in fact be some problems on this. The, the connection is a little loose. There may in fact be some problems on this test set, um, but the inherent operation of this unit, given these value of components, may be may be correct the 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 capacitors may in fact provide this type of duty cycle I, not spending that much time with solid state circuitry even though the 555 is what we all started with i haven't used one of these in a really really long time so in in, in depth anyway i just kind of you know probe power and pin three and see if an output comes out is pretty much the extent i do with these things so i'm going to go and take a look and see if if these capacitors what particularly affects duty cycle on these and if that's the case, being how there's only a couple of uh, um, support elements here, um, if that's the case, if it's, if it's set up this way, then this is correct operation, and it may just be that the 555 has gone bad and it warrants replacement. I'll just point out for this video that I've brought down the tripod another 10 inches. Obviously, this video is not just an instruction on the repair of this unit, but it's also to... Uh, uh, familiarize myself with how this gimbal is going to be used on the bench with this tripod so this will uh, make it easier to see the oscilloscope and when I'm working on it look less like overhead and more of a side shot uh, basically after I looked at the footage from last night I was able to review it and say wait that's way too high for me to be looking at and I could still get in here and I could uh, still show the um, the oscilloscope if I use the, the correct mode, I get control of it like that. I can still move over to the oscilloscope like that and back to whatever I'm working with. So, yeah, that looks good. I think I'm going to keep it down at this level. going to further point out that this 555, I did go and look at the uh, information about this particular IC. And what I found was it is possible, obviously, to achieve a 50% duty cycle but the mathematical formula that's associated with it assumes uh, kind of like a constant frequency. And there is a way to to increase the ability to achieve a more stable duty cycle, but it's not 100% stable. There's no way that that could be achieved with this m amount of components. as much more complex circuitry to do so. In short, uh, all this components and resistors and whatever was selected for this frequency range and uh, a good enough amount of duty cycle uh, for this application. So I'm going to assume that that's right. What I'm going to try and do is just simply replace this 555 with another one and see if the problem goes away because I don't think that these capacitors or the resistor is bad. 
in one last time to demonstrate that this 555 uh, from the 1970s, uh, probably mid-1970s, is still working fine. I'm just going to do a very quick sweep here. This is the maximum, and I'm just going to slowly bring it in. I have some loose connections on, on this oscilloscope here, but that's all. Everything else is fine, so I'm going to bring it in. And there we go. So that all the way in, we can see still stable. We're going to go with that and swap it out. As it's permanently affixed to the board, we're going to use the uh, solder sucker soldering iron. I don't have one of those really fancy uh, vacuum ones, but this one does the job for small applications and does it safely. It's just not as quick. This one has the, uh, the plunger, so I'm going to use this. And now they're all clear and empty, I should be able to remove the 555 chip. It's also a great time to measure the capacitors with that 555 out of circuit. Most of the uh, circuitry is in open and that 0.22 microfarad capacitor is reading 0 .2, 0 0.219, so almost on the money. I'll move to the next one. This one reads a little low, should be a, a 0.1, but um you know, uh, the variation in capacitors back then allowed for that. It shows that the capacitor works, however. There, there's nothing wrong with any of these components. We're going to put the new 50, 555 in and see how things are operating. I've got the new IC soldered in on the bottom here. We're going to hook up some power to it, hook it up to the oscilloscope, test it out, see how it's working now. So I've rehooked this up to the oscilloscope in power. Um, one piece of the battery connector had rotted through. We're going to have to put on a new uh, 9 volt tab for the battery. It just rotted out garbage. Anyway, I've set up the oscilloscope right now so that we can see the uh, uh, sweep in its maximum position. And it looks as though this swap out of the 555 has increased stability. And then I'm going to, I'm going to have to adjust the oscilloscope again because we can't see the max and min you know, with that kind of deflection on the same screen. But I'll start it off. Also, the connections on the oscilloscope are not very good. They're barely hanging on, so there'll be a little bit of crackling here and there as I touch the unit. But we see this is the maximum, the widest uh, uh, wavelength, and as I turn it. And by the way, this didn't change the um, the duty cycle in any way. We can see all the way at maximum, the duty cycle is is about 50%, as we see right here. This is pretty much 50%, maybe 49 to 51, and that's going to get worse, um, if, if you want to call it worse. It's definitely going to, going to change. But as I turn it, we'll see that it definitely doesn't start to distort anymore. The, the problem's been corrected. But I'll just point out that by the time I get to about, we're looking at, at this point already, we're at about, one and a half on top to one graticule on the bottom. So significant change at that point, right? And I'm going to keep going. As a matter of fact, this would probably be a point where I could adjust outward a bit so we could see. So so at this point, with that adjustment, we're looking at, at, about, at about three to two of duty cycle, but still it's not distorting. So I'm going to keep dialing it in some more. And at this point, we could see that it's a two to one top to bottom duty cycle. Again, not distorting anymore. I'm gonna bring it in some more. I'm gonna readjust for it. And now we're seeing, uh, as we approach the end of the spectrum here, we're looking at about three to one top to bottom. So, but again, still stable, not distorting. Turning it more. I'm going to adjust again, and now we see considerable change. I'll leave it here, and now already, it's it's as you get to the end already, it's just there. There's just a trace amount. It's like 99% to 1%. However, it it almost makes me wonder. You know, I'm I'm pondering. 
if VW is in fact using the uh, uh, duty cycle as a way of measuring the uh, um, or, or dictating what happens with the speedometer and, and odometer, not the, the 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 pulse itself, but the relation from top to bottom. I'm I'm not sure. I don't know how these speedometers are built or how they work. You know, all I'm doing is, you know, as as we approach about 75 percent, we'd see this sharp angle up here. And that would get to the end and the whole thing would explode and a bunch of static would appear on the screen. That is no longer the case. Everything works fine. The reason for failure uh, was clearly the 555 timer chip had failed. Replacing it fixed it. So I wonder if I could zoom in on this a lot. And, and now I'm really breaking it out. And when I really break it out, we can see that it, it is still stable. So very good. And if I come back all the way in you can't really trigger on that of course but that's what we're looking at we'll dial that back out and there's the timing pulses so did I break that 9 volt connector just so we'd have to go to Harbor Freight probably the world will never know I don't know but we're going to Harbor uh, Freight anyway. You, I won't let you have lunch until you tell me the truth. How about that? Either way, we're going to Harbor Freight. Okay. In most cases, you'll find this piece of crap for about $5 at Harbor Freight. And if you're lucky, you spend more than $25, you'll actually get one for free. Lots of people have stacks of these sitting in their house. If they haven't thrown them away yet. I've just scavenged the only things worth saving out of this unit. <laughs> Everything else is garbage. But the only thing we really need to use is this piece right here. I'm going to solder it into our tester. Connector's on. Let's connect the battery, hook this up to an oscilloscope, and check it out. I don't have my oscilloscope or a working oscilloscope, so this will have to do for today. Here's what we're seeing. We'll do a sweep on this analog scope. And here's the best I can set up the triggering. Some of these knobs are frozen. So this is how I've set it up to work. So we'll start with the lowest, and I will slowly turn this knob here, and ramp it up. You can see the, the duty cycle changing as it compresses, and this is all the way at the highest. Now it's time to test this bad boy out. We're going to connect it to the vehicle speed sensor connector thingy. Circuit. Circuit. All right. And you got that turned I don't know if we're using the battery or the, the I'm going to switch it to battery just to be safe. We can use the internal battery of this unit, right? So What's I switch the choices. Battery or 12 volts? No, battery. So we're using the, the on position. All right, right now we're reading zero. Do it again. There you go. 15. I'm sorry, I'm moving it. Jeez. Oh. Can you move it a little at a time? Oh, I'm sorry. Let me bring it down to nothing. Right. Hold on a second. Let me let me reposition this to get it in the car. This is as low as the knob goes right now, and it's showing about 15 miles an hour. And I guess this is just to test the functionality of it. It doesn't I know this starts at a at a frequency, it doesn't start at nothing, so I'd expect it, there to be something on the speedometer. Right, so I'm going to slowly ramp it up, turning this knob. And yeah, it looks... Putting a like lot of miles on this car, sir. Exponential. Yeah, I, don't, I don't think that affects the odometer. Yeah. I just watched it counting. See the odometer? Is it? Oh wow, it is. Yeah, so it actually, it does actually think that the car is driving. Oh yeah, very interesting. See, let's not do that too much, but I mean, it does work. It is, yeah, it is in fact cool. reading. It's a cool tool to I have. just want to try one more time. I'm gonna switch to zero and do one more sweep with the 12 volts so we can read it off the battery that's connected to the car itself. So now we're on 12 volts. We're using the, the battery of the car through the, through the harness. And just a very quick sweep. And obviously this will produce a pulse that the speedometer can no longer read. So I'm going to bring it up to about 140 right there. And I'm going to roll it back. So the unit is now working. That's pretty cool. That's done with the test. 
I think this concludes the repair of the OTS-1 Volkswagen pulse generating speedometer testing unit. What I do you concur. think, Jason? Thanks for watching. See ya. Bye bye.